while we're on it, um, just tell us about Hillsborough. Oh, crikey. That was a strange day. <clears throat> we were... There was a really good music session going on. Uh, and back in the day, there was a, a fella called Roger Noel who had the frog and parrot. He was the landlord of the frog and parrot. And what we used to do back in the day was if if I had a, I, I'd thrown somebody out, for instance, or Mrs. Flynn at the Dog and Partridge had thrown somebody out, or Bob Rhodes, who was at the Grapes, had thrown somebody um, we'd ring around to one another. We'd say, hey, watch out, I've just thrown a, a load of idiots out, the drunken football fo fools or something, you know, and you'd warn the other licensees. So we were talking about this, and Roger Noel said, well, look, why don't we actually set up a proper system for this? So... Um, we did, and uh, I was on that original little crowd that did it with Roger, and we called it Pub Watch. It's now around the world. It's gone around the world now. <laughs> this Pub Watch, and it's uh, you know, it went electronic with devices and things as technology moved on. But it was the old the old Pub Watch thing, you know. So I got a phone call from Roger Noel uh, this particular Saturday, and he said, uh, "I've just had the police on." Uh, they want all licensed premises in the city closing down. I said, what's going on? He said, there's been somebody murdered at Hillsborough. I think there's been a bloke murdered or something, but we don't know. So I got the radio from upstairs and I brought it down into the kitchen, turned it on to Radio Sheffield, closed the front door, but with everybody in, because they're all people we knew, are all nice people. And uh, there, there had been earlier in the day at lunchtime, there had been a load of a crowd from Liverpool, you know, fans, whatever, who would come in for a, you know, pie and a pint before they went to the match. Uh, about, I don't know, 20 of them. So, anyway, they'd gone off to the match. And then, of course, this happened. And then, listening to the radio, it became apparent there wasn't one guy who'd been stabbed to death. There were quite a few people dead, and it wasn't whatever the people thought it was. I don't know. So it began to unfold that this, this terrible thing had happened. And we were still closed, and uh, it got to oh, possibly uh, six, seven o'clock at night, and we were looking out the window, and we saw these people who had been here wandering. Bear in mind, there were no mobile phones. If you couldn't find a telephone box, you could make a phone call. And here were all these people who had got split up, they got, you know, from the family, back in Liverpool, people watching the television saying, God, what's happening, you know. And they couldn't communicate, so we opened the door, we let them all in, left the door open, and they wanted, the, f the first thing they wanted, can I, I need to get through to my dad, my auntie, whatever. And um, so we'd had an old pay phone on the end of the bar, but you could put a key in it to turn it into an ordinary phone, so that's what we did. And uh, they were all queuing up to use it to ring, you know, try and get through to find who's, has anybody heard from Ernest, you know. Um Barbara, being far more practical, shot in the kitchen and made a lot of soup and sandwiches for everybody, you know. So it was most distressing. And uh, eventually they, they went on their way. And uh, then later on, a couple of our customers came in. One was a young doctor, and he'd been on duty at the Northern General when it all happened. And as soon as it began to unfold, he said, we got patients in with what they call flail injuries, crush injuries. And I said, but what's happening now? You know, have they got... What have they got down there? What facilities have they got? And he said he commandeered an ambulance and, and went down there with frontline treatment. Um, sadly, too late to be of a lot of use to a lot of people. And the other fellow with him was a pal of his, who I also know very well, who was a young policeman. And he'd been there, <coughs> and he'd actually, he should have been in the hospital because he'd got cuts on his hands where he'd tried to pull the railings open. But he'd been there and he'd been right in the middle of it, and they were quite clearly traumatised, you know. But it was a, a just a terrible, terrible thing. You know, a, a, a day you'd never forget, you know, a day, a day you wouldn't want to go through again. Horror. I mean, that, that was just, we were just peripheral to it all, but for the people who were actually there, it was horrendous. And for a very long time after Hillsborough, quite a lot of those Liverpudlings came back on the anniversary. They had a pint here, you know. It's all there. <coughs> yeah. Very powerful. <coughs>